Revenue Officer Frank Malozzi. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Great to see you. So a couple of things. Um, first of all, um, this next, um, this morning's keynote and session is around um, and chatting with our customers. And I want to first thank all of our customers for taking the time and spending the few days with us here in Las Vegas. So I know it means a lot to, uh, to the employees and the folks here and uh, the folks that uh, develop the great products that you all use. Second is our partners. Um, our partners add a tremendous amount of value to the solutions and products that we bring to market and expands our reach. So um, again, a big shout out to our partners for the support. And then most importantly, um, this event takes months and months and months to put together. And um, these folks out here are employees. They obsess over doing things right and making sure that um, you know, they hear you and they're delivering those, those, those solutions. And I want to thank all of our employees for the support. We take care of them, they take care of you. And then, and then the press, um, having you here keeps us and keeps our customers really in tune in terms of the trends and where we need to invest and, and where we need to take our companies and, and, and uh, thank you for, for, for provide, providing that. So um, two other things, registration is open for Connect 2021. It's back here at the Wynn, um, same week. And um, stay tuned, we're gonna, we're gonna get a, a lot of great information out to you so uh, we can have a, another great event next year. So let's start. I'd like, again, I'm going to moderate a, a panel, so I want to, I want to bring um, our, our panel out and our customers. So I'd like to start with uh, Mark Pop, VP of Manufacturing for Imagine. Mark, please welcome Mark. <laughs> Pam Richards, owner of Color Gamut Digital Imaging. Good morning, Pam. <laughs> Cody Hull, Product Development Manager, Print Services, UPS. Welcome, Cody. And then Lynn Smith, Chief Marketing Officer at the Sourcing Group. So welcome, Lynn. Yes. <laughs> Lynn, sit down, relax. Great. <clears throat> so, so let's start with uh, maybe a little bit about um, your business and, and um, about your company and your role. And we'll start with you, Mark. So the uh, Imagine Group of Companies is a fairly diverse group. Um, we're a printer. Uh, first and uh, software generator second and we're prominently POP business most people know us as that but we produce uh, quite a bit of packaging and soft signage located in Charlotte Chicago Minneapolis and Burbank California Pam I'm the proud owner of Color Gamut Digital Imaging here in Las Vegas. We're in the trade show business, hence we're in Las Vegas. Fantastic. <laughs> um, 15 years we've been here. We started with five employees and have grown to 80. We built a brand new building last year. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend last year. We were in the middle of moving, so, and uh, have a wonderful group of employees. And I'm in the digital business. Hence, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for being here. Cody. Great. Thank you. So my name is Cody Hall. I'm the product development manager for the UPS store, a uh, business segment of UPS. And <clears throat> we are responsible for uh, 5,000 plus uh, UPS store individual franchise owned locations across North America. And uh, we operate in the in a digital on-demand print space as well. Uh, and we, we use a, a couple different uh, EFI products, uh, and most recently, um, market direct storefront. So we're very excited about that relationship, expanding with EFI. And definitely great to be here to, to speak in front of uh, this particular panel, um, as well as partake in the show. Great. Thanks for participating and sharing your experience. It's great. Lynn? And I'm Lynn Smith, and I work for the Sourcing Group. And we are a little bit different than everybody else on the panel because we do not own print equipment. We're actually a business process outsourcer. So we work with a network of certified trade partners. And we do a number of different product lines. We do print, we do promo, and we do apparel. And what we focus on is we focus on streamlining processes to actually cut costs and take some workflow out of the, uh, 
processes for customers. Um, and we currently use Market Direct from Cross Media. So I, we've got a we've got a lot of products in our portfolio, and and of course, um, you know, looking at you know your your background, your infrastructure, many of you use different products. Um, so Lynn, what what specific? Can you talk a little bit about the product and how it works and what applications it ser it, it, the product serves? Um, so the largest application we use is um, the storefront, and we use it. For, we got into it for one specific customer. They were actually brought to us by consultants. We didn't even choose EFI. <laughs> um, and we actually started using the digital storefront with this customer. And when we started, we had probably about 800 users. So it was a couple months implementation, help with EFI, all went you know, smoothly. And, um, after two years, we now have, for the same customer, because they've been growing through acquisitions, about 16,000 users. So the EFI product, thank God they brought it to us because it's been able to be scalable and I don't think any other product line for marketing uh, for their storefront would have been able to meet those needs. Excellent. Uh, Cody, you've gone through a selection process. You've you, you, you've, you've used storefront products before. What, what stimulated you to make, make the decision to move forward with Market Direct? And what were some of the sort of um, um, differentiators to, to, to move you into that solution? Because sure. it's an incredible <coughs> investment, um, 5,000 locations. Um, and we're thrilled that we've been working on this project with you. But um, please. Make yeah, sure. absolutely. So um, when, when we went, we, we conducted a formal request for proposal or RFP process when we initiated, um, when we started looking at changing from our existing platform to a new platform. And really the intention at that point in time was to just understand what was available in the market and make sure that we were offering the right product uh, and features with, with the right features and services for our franchisees and their end consumers. So we started this project back in October of 2018 and uh, it's quite extensive, especially for all those involved, I'm sure. Um, if, you've, if you've been in, engaged in this process, you'll know that full well. But um, what, what ultimately led us to this decision was Market Direct Storefront definitely, based on our review and the needs that we, we came to them with for our customers and franchisees, that offered the, the broadest set of features and functionality that we can utilize out of the box with, with limited uh, customizations. And, and that's really what we were looking for, is a product that not only could meet the business need of 5,000 plus individually owned locations, that's tough as it is, but looking for a product that can suit those needs, build as our, as we build in the e-commerce web to print space, and scale and help us get to that point. Because in our previous iteration, um, we, were, we, we hit some roadblocks in, in terms of what the, the functionality that's available on the current system. Um, we, we, we were growing and we're growing very rapidly, and so with that, with the company we were currently dealing with, we had some growing pains, and so, and so much so, it started to become a barrier. Mm -hmm. And um, as we started engaging with EFI, we do have a relationship with EFI on the fiery side. So all of our locations do have uh, fiery color controllers, um, which also led another reason why we just made the decision to go with Market Direct Storefront is that not only can we see, suit the needs from a customer user experience, franchisee user experience, but then we can also start introducing some more automated workflow type situations in our stores to make it easier for the stores and their, and their employees to uh, conduct print business. Because our, in our locations, we're not dedicated print shops. So our locations are doing everything from mailing, packaging, um, mailboxes, mm -hmm. shipping, and then printing is one of these products and services. So uh, in order to find an employee, train an employee to be well suited and well versed in all of these products is a challenge. So we also we were looking for a product that made this very simple and Market Direct Storefront was that product for us. Yeah, that's awesome. That is great. And we're looking forward to uh, completing the project. So thanks for the opportunity. So Pam, you've been, been a customer of ours for, for, for many, many years. And um, could you talk a little bit about the products that, that, uh, that you, you have? And um, we've been doing business with EFI for 30 years. My first printer was a little 801. She had six heads. 
she. <laughs> of course. She had six heads. She printed 100 square feet an hour, and we were smoking them. Um, we moved to Las Vegas in 2004, and our very first two printers were a 5330 and a 3360. The thing about our business is the printers are our search engines. So they're part of our family. So we named them. So Tiki and Rondé were our first two printers. <laughs> and they became part of us because without them, we don't succeed. And so today, what, what is in your, your portfolio of oh, products? We've, we, ha we have a rigid roll-to-roll. -roll. We have uh, five PFI printers on that side. On the cloth division, we have Reggiani Pro, we have a 520, and we have, we have two 16 foots. We have one Reggiani, and we built the room to buy two Reggiani Pros that we'll have by hopefully the end of the year. Wonderful. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my neck on the line here, but so what, what do you, what do you, how do you run your business? What, what type of ERP or system are you using we use Fiery um, on the rigid and the roll-to-roll -roll side, and it works out extremely well for us because having the same printers in your facility allows you to use the same profiles, allows you to use the same rip, allows you to use the same inks, so they all work hand-in-hand -hand with one another to become partners with each other. Wonderful. And then your, your accounting and billing systems and so on, is it, is it proprietary or are you, what are you using? We use a separate system. You use a separate yeah, system. We haven't grown that much. Maybe there's an opportunity. <laughs> 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 Write that down. Mark, so um, imagine, I mean, one of the largest in the United States and you've got a slew of portfolio of different technologies um, from our Nozomi technology to Reggiani, and I know you've got uh, a number of our ERP solutions as well. Um, you know, in our one-on-one -on -one conversations, I'm just, I just floored by, you know, your vision and so on. Can you talk a little bit about the portfolio and what, what you guys are, you know, doing in some of the markets you're serving? From the EFI standpoint, it's probably easier to say what we don't use of yours. Oh, okay. Close <laughs> <laughs> so, your ears. You know, and, um, from old and new. I mean, our, our biggest facility still runs on PSI. Wow. That's not supported anymore, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we still run on it. And that's one of the things we're looking at today is, or this whole week is, what can we do to bring more things in? But we run Monarch, mm -hmm. Metric, Print Flow, and various parts and pieces in different places of the country to try to bring them all together into a single solution. Mm -hmm. And you know, exploring this week what it would take to do that for an enterprise. Um, there's not too many places that can offer all the things that EFI has. Um, from a hardware standpoint, um, I actually, we go back a little further. I have a Butech 1330 that was nine DPI. <laughs> was our first press, <laughs> an airbrush. Um, and today, um, Reggiani's HS 125s, Nozomi, um, pretty much all the solutions are somewhere in one of our facilities. Um, the markets we serve, um, if if you're out in the industry, you probably know Imagine Print Solutions as a POP provider. That's about 50% of our revenue. The other 50% is something else. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we've been fairly good at over the years is not seeing a piece of equipment serving a market. So our Nozomi, uh, Nozomi's a corrugated press. I mean, it's, it's big and it's advertised as a corrugated press. And I would guess less than 10% of what we do on that press is corrugate. But we have enough help from the people at EFI that we had a vision that we love the way it printed, but it wasn't all of our substrates, all the medias and the markets that we serve. So what do we have to do to make it work it's not necessarily easy and that's not necessarily quick, but um, we're able to achieve things that many other companies couldn't um, and at the same time help EFI. Um, you know, their engineers spend so much time in our buildings and they're learning a lot and we're learning a lot. So it's, it's been a good partnership from that standpoint. That's fantastic. Yeah.
cannot emphasize enough that um, you know it, it, EFI's culture is really around um, understanding the customers, and you hear many companies talk about that. But we, the, it's incredible the value that we get from partnerships. You know, our customers are our partners, and and the fact that you, uh, you know, give us the opportunity to have our engineers on site. Um, that are hungry to understand and build these new applications, so that you can, um, you know, you can have uh, you know, products to go out and serve the markets are incredible, and we really, really appreciate those partnerships. If I could, I could add one more thing, and um, we have a lot of EFI products in our facilities, but I will say EFI is no different than any other supplier we have. They have to earn their way in every time, mm -hmm. and over time they have continually earn their way in, but, but even today when we look at what are we changing for an ERP, do we need, you know, is Fiery the right answer for us? We, we look at everything and, and EFI has done a good job at earning their, mm -hmm. their way into our company. So. Well, still on the topic, you have a number of different platforms and I'm assuming that a lot of it was done through some of the acquisitions and, 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 and so that integration. Share a little bit. I, I've had some conversations with a, a number of, of um, customers that have that same thing. There's a there's a lot of consolidation going on in our industry and some of the challenges around that. I'm, I'm just curious. So the, um, imagine uh, had organic growth up to about 250 million in sales over about a 25 year period, and then in the last several years they have acquired Classic Graphics in Charlotte, uh, GFX International in Graves Lake outside of Chicago, Midnight Oil in Burbank, California, all running different equipment, different ERPs, different philosophies, and each one of the acquisitions I'd imagine made were companies that were doing well that had an entrepreneurial owner that was, um, you know, saw the light at the end of the tunnel and was ready for retirement. And at some point in time, we <laughs> let each one go and said, you're, you're doing a good job, what do you need to do better? And after a year or two of doing that, we decided that we're not leveraging all the things that we should to make us a better company as an enterprise. So um, we're, we're going through an evolution now where some, like I said, some divisions run PSI, some run Monarch, some run Sirius, some run all different things of what do we got to do to put those mm -hmm. all together. It, it's not easy because at the same time we're still trying to produce work and generate a profit. That's great. So it's a challenge. Thank you. That's great. So Lynn, what, you know, yes. what can you do today? So you've, you've implemented Market Direct yes. that, you, that you're doing differently or, or you know, what can you do today that you weren't able to do before you implemented it? Um, well, you know what? There's a lot of benefits and things we can do today that we could not do before Market Direct and especially before Cross Media. The cross media product opens up the whole digital world to you. So now you can actually take traditional print and mix it with email and social media, develop campaigns, wrap in databases. So the extra punch really came when we added that cross media product because now we had a whole new world we could open up to our clients. That's great. Now, Cody, you, you, um you recently again selected Market Direct as your first choice to web, web to print platform. Can, can you walk us through? I think you know we've got we've got a number of representatives here. Your selection process, and again, what what sort of really differentiated? I know you talked about the integration, and you had uh, have had a relationship for many years with us. But really curious about that evaluation process because you guys did a very thorough evaluation process. Sure. So initiated what we call a request for proposal RFP uh, in October of, of 2018 and that consisted I think about 160 business requirements that, that uh, myself and then our, and our team had put together and it, it may be more than that and it may, it may have been 160 pages of business requirements I can't re re quite recall at this point but as I should have them memorized because we it's quite extensive level of effort on our, on, our effort on our part to put together exactly what we wanted a system like this to do. Mm -hmm. um, especially because again, we're trying to support 5,000 individual business owners and obviously with those come specific needs, but we're also trying to establish 
kind of a standardized experience for the end consumer when they when they engage with us virtually, that we they have a standard experience no matter what store they go to. So we can start to create some more brand consistency from a product offering standpoint in regards to print. So as we were going through this process, we engaged um, a number of vendors uh, to go through this process, and, and the it, it, it's quite extensive because we we sent out the request for proposal. We're asking each one of the vendors to respond to every single one of the business requirements that we provided them in the affirmative, in the negative, or uh, in some cases, uh, if they can only partially meet those needs, okay, what does that mean and what, what would be the al alternative solution in this case? So um, as we were going through the process, there wasn't much uh, that EF5 would have responded to where they just said flat out no. And that's been uh, the, our experience for the most part working with EF5 moving through this entire process is we're not met with no very often, if at all, and if we if it is something that the EFI is unable to do or not able to meet 100%, they always come with solutions. And I say solutions, plural, because it's not always one. So we're presented with several different options to say, here, the EFI is really, was really encouraged, uh, encouraged us to really think about what our end goal is and what, what, what was our desired end result. And then that was what the focus was, not necessarily the minutia to get there, to say, you want to accomplish X, we can do that by ABC, where we may have said, well, no, we, we thought D was the path, and they said, no, you have these other three options. And so um, it did require, I think, some people on our end uh, to, to be a little bit more flexible as well to, to mm -hmm. understand, you know, we, we, yes, UPS, the UPS store is a very large company, as well as EFI. And I think a lot of situations, I know from us, if, uh, on, on with some other projects that we do, where we, we tend to kind of bend others to our will so to speak, is just given the, 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 the brand. But in a situation like this, you're, you're partnering with a, an organization that's been in the industry much longer than you have, the print industry much longer. So it behooves us to, you know, to heed that advice and um, you know, kind of work together in a partnership to get to, to reach those end results. And I don't, we didn't encounter another company through this process that approached this, uh, our request for this type of service as like EFI did. And we felt that we would be in very good hands moving forward uh, with, with EFI. And so far, that's been the case. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very confident that once we implement Storefront, um, our franchisees will feel the same way. That's great. So Pam, you've been a longtime customer, as we, 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 we shared with the, with the audience, and serving trade shows and conference industries. And you've seen growth um, and opportunities in the textile, print, soft signage. Can you describe it? You know, you've, you've had, um, you know, Butech, and you've been serving this market for a number of years, and there's been a number of changes in technology. But what what changes have you seen in your business over the years? The trade show business changes rapidly, um, constantly, and our customers are always looking for better ways um, to present their products. As you are here, um, so we moved into the cloth part of the business just recently. It's only been three years. Um, so it took me two years to get in because I'm a very slow learner and it takes me a while to comprehend. Mm. So we went in with a 16 foot and a Reggiani. It was a great way to get started. We went all in. Um, but here's the issue that, 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 pre that we're presented with is we are really on demand. Your convention opens at eight o'clock in the morning, it's four o'clock in the morning, and I have three hours. It, I, uh, the majority of our turnaround is 24 to 48 hours. So we have to have reliable equipment to be able, to, that, that, that's the least of our problems. You know, we mm -hmm. encounter so many other issues. But, Back to the cloth part of our work, it's grown two million last year, just in the trade show business. And we have to, the challenge that we have is that we have to figure out how we can turn it in three hours. The Reggiani out. helps us do that, definitely. Um, we're seeing a huge growth in seamless cloth in this business, nobody wants a seam anymore. Mm -hmm. So we started with one, um, again, as I said, we have two now. I never imagined I would need more than two. Um, but it gives us the, 
the capabilities of printing in our facility approximately somewhere around 20,000 square feet a day. Everything is driven by square footage for us because you know, we have to get that registration unit out there. We have got to get the entrance unit done. It opens the day before the show. So on demand is really important to us. Incredible. And that seed you can see right here. And what a big difference. And what's interesting is we love hearing about when you serve in these markets, you oftentimes talk about certain applications, commoditizing, um, and the differentiation to going to a 16 foot going seamless enables you to go after certain jobs and position it a little bit differently and that work um, thankfully yields better margins for you and helps complement um, yes it does still present challenges because we we have to convince the cloth manufacturing people that 16 foot is here yes you're, you're very limited to material that you can offer and the majority of that either comes out of China or Prong or you know Germany. So if they have issues, we have issues. So that it it's more of a challenge on the on the material side of the business mm -hmm. than it is the machine and equipment side of the business for us at this point. Interesting. So we you know when you look at some of these applications, one great application we have uncovered primarily in Europe is leather application. And when you look at some of these big, really huge brands in the marketplace, um, whether they're developing a handbag or shoe, you're, you're starting to see um, colorful imagery being, being printed on, on leather. And you would you'd surprise because you look at, you look at some of the, the products that are produced and it's, it's a grand format printer that's producing some of that work. I was in one shop that produced, um, so that created watch bands for Mont Blanc. And they were producing those, they were producing, the, they were actually developing the leather and coating the leather and printing the leather on Vutech printers. So the applications are, are, are just so vast and incredible. A great segue into, you know, Mark, you've got so many different technologies and, you, you know, it's just interesting to understand what, what is, what are some of the markets you, what are some of the markets that you're addressing and what do you think are some of the, the growth areas? So markets for us, soft signage obviously is a big one. We have a couple of Reggianis and some other dye sub equipment. Um, it certainly is a, it's a growing market. Um, brick and mortar stores are pulling back what they do and less stores and less buying. So we, we have to look for ways to be more frugal, more offerings, um, to not only compete with people that are probably sitting out in the audience here, but other ways they have of selling their product that don't involve something we make. So that's probably our biggest challenge is not that I have to compete with somebody sitting over here, but it all goes away if TV takes that from us. So we, we constantly look at that and um, there's gotta be ways to get the unit costs down so that we can compete with people in other medias and things like the Nozomi do that for us because the, the output's tremendous. The other thing we constantly run up against with, and I would say the Nozomi is the other good example, is in the past we'd always have to say, do you want me to run fast or do you want it to look good? And now we can do both. It, it is a litho-like print quality at speeds that are 10 times any flatbed that's out there. So that helps keep that product from going somewhere else, a competitor or another market totally. So. At the same time, the, the next job that runs on a, on a Nozomi or a flatbed is a folding carton or it's something else. And we have to be just as good as everybody else with that too. So we have to be versatile. Um, uh, we're also a direct mail house, so we do a fair amount of mailing. Uh, we also produce out of home. So if you go down to Burbank area and you'll see Warner Brothers billboards that have cars going through them and um, being able to produce products where we're, uh, we're fabricators as much as we are a printer. If you got a car going through a billboard, you're, you're not doing that on one of the EFI presses, mm -hmm. so, but the EFI press will support that. So, you know, we're finding ways to use it all over the spectrum of all the things that we produce and, and even some markets we aren't in yet. Are you seeing changes in, in 
investments in retail. You, you starting to see that turn around? Um, because there's been a, 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 a period of time where a lot of retail um, firms were investing in online just to compete and keep up, and they ignored that, that environment. And, and I'm just curious if you're starting to see that, that change. I would say certainly they're shrinking. Yeah. You know, less brick and mortar stores. Um, there's a little bit of a regeneration of that lately. Um, certainly they are more demanding than they've ever been. Um, you know, we're, some of the solutions we're looking at here are the, the retailers or let's say C stores or convenience stores uh, where you have hours to produce hundreds of quotes to see if you win the work or somebody else will. Mm -hmm. So certainly the demand and the turnaround, um, some of the other people are talking about uh, the turnarounds that in our world they shrink every day. I mean, there's an unbelievable amount of jobs that order in by noon, ship it by five. And that's just the way it's going. So you, you need some pretty robust systems, and if you want to play, that's what you got to do. We're getting unrealistic. The turnaround times? I know. It's, um, <laughs> what is unrealistic? I mean, we used to say, a day, that's unrealistic. Now you're it's saying. Same day. It's same you know, day. Same, yeah, same day. It's, you know, noon to five. On product what types and quantities that probably aren't realistic to do in a day. And if, if you have a good business and you're full, you don't have room for it anyhow, but you right. gotta figure out a way to do it. Um, but I, I would say one of the things that drives that, if you, if you have ways that um, you can take a spreadsheet into say iQuote and generate 400 estimates and job tickets in minutes, now I can participate in that market. So mm -hmm. um, EFI helps drive that, whether it's for our company or other companies is, um, um, speed to market starts there. Yes. Talk about speed to market because I, I don't believe we have a choice because we are competing with, with, with digital and those folks making decisions, buying decisions, grew up in a digital world. Um, and, and, and that's, and that's um, it's, it's interesting and, it's, and it's, it's a challenge to compete, but we have to and, and that's why we see these turns. Um, Lynn, are you seeing that, um, you know, the same, those challenges in your business, and what are you what are you doing to to support that that turnaround that's expected? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we rely heavily on our vendors, and really, with our digital storefront, all of our vendors run the fiery software. So the orders from the time they come in are pushed over to them, and then they have them within minutes. And then we've got SLAs, and that's how we manage it. So when we get contracts with customers, you know. 24 hours from the time of order receipt or whatever it may be, it's got to be out the door. Um, and it does, it just keeps shrinking. They, you know, we used to be able to say 72 hours. Now we're down to 12 to 24, depending wow. on the client. Um, but it's, it's the world we live in today. And Cody, you see, you, you, your franchisees are seeing the same thing? Absolutely. And so we, we experience the same thing, not just on the print product and service, but other products and services we may offer that um, where SLAs, expected SLAs may be a couple days now shrinking to a day, if not same day. Um, print is no exception there. And so the, some of the ways that we, we help try to uh, meet the needs of the market is, at least from an online, just say web to print perspective, is in configuring products in a way that we have to establish certain order buy times and limit maybe quantities or paper stocks or, or certain things that would allow our franchisees to source, to, to receive the order, produce the order, and have it ready the same day. Um, so that, that, that becomes a challenge for us. This is continuously a challenge that we're going to face moving forward. I, I don't doubt that. Because uh, it could, it may go from a day to an hour. Mm -hmm. you know, as, as you start to see you know, Amazon reshaping some of that e-commerce experience where we obviously we, see, we, we feel that as well. Uh, but we do also have heavily rely on vendors and partners to assist uh, us and our franchisees in those efforts. Um, we do encourage our franchisees um, to reach out to local commercial printers in their area to kind of help support any, uh, any overrun or if there's any other job that they can't produce. We certainly want to have that, those relationships in place because, again, it's small business to small business owner mm -hmm. relationship. Um, those seem to work very well. So for those of you that are in operating that space, which I'm, sure, I'm assuming is most of you in this room, 
If you haven't been approached by a UPSO location, I highly encourage you to approach a UPSO location because there's always a need um, on either side. So we, there could be some short run copy digital stuff that, that may not make sense for, for some of your locations, uh, but may make sense for us. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guarantee you that we're probably the bigger benefactor there is that there, our customers do have growing needs on, the, on the, the grand format, the large format side, as well as some heavy quantity high run stuff. Um, that we wouldn't be able to produce without engaging um, a, a, a local commercial printer or some of our national relationships. That doesn't solve the, the, the turnaround time, but it does solve from a solution set. But from a turnaround time perspective, we're having, we're, we're, we, we experience the same challenges as everybody here, everybody in this room, um, and we have to put some certain parameters around it to see if we can ac accommodate those requests. Interesting. I, you know, I'm a, we're, we're all buyers here, and I'm also a customer, and I'm a buyer. I consider myself a hybrid buyer. I buy things online, some weird things. Um, I bought my last car online and had it delivered on a flatbed. Um, I, but I, I, what's interesting is, you know, uh, I see my mailbox full every day with catalog. I mean, just jammed. I belong to some social sites. Um, and trying to find the right handy person to come in and, and do some work, and lo and behold, I get a booklet at the end of every month on all my search criteria, articles that I can get into. And so I, 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 see, I see print coming back full circle, and quite frankly, I spend more time, not that I'm in the industry, well, maybe it is, because I'm in the industry, but I, I, I tend to read that printed material because I am afraid to open up any, any mail that's out there, quite <laughs> frankly. So. So uh, you guys, you guys seeing that? Are you seeing a change? And this is for anyone, you know, from that buyer, that customer, um, and is that stimulating what you guys are are, are doing in your business? I'll, I'll yeah, take, please. I'll take a shot at this. So, uh, you know, every one of our UPSO locations, obviously, we have banks of mailboxes. So I, we hear from our franchisees that they're seeing you know, that flood in with this additional print material that are going in these mailboxes because they. They sort the mail, put it in for the customers that come to pick it up. And I think it's been, it has definitely been a benefit, an unintended benefit for us that it puts that tangible print material in the hands of our franchisees and their associates and to help them understand this is a very well, uh, it is a, it's still very much alive, it's a very much prominent industry, and these are things that you could also be doing or helping produce or being a part of in some way. And so uh, it may, it also, it's another avenue for us to kind of, for the franchisees to engage with those customers from the mail, our mailbox customers to say, we can do this for you as well. Or is this something that you need on a more regular basis? How can I help you uh, with this particular uh, job? So uh, it's a long-winded answer to answer your question, but yes, we are seeing that. We are seeing an influx of that material. Um, and it has been an unintended benefit for us because it, it puts print top of mind with our franchisees and our associates because they're seeing it more and more every day come through the store. Excellent. Change gears a little bit. Um, the question is, how, how do you guys keep current? You know, knowing what the, the latest trends and so on, and of course you serve a number of different markets, and I'd like to get your perspective, and I think the audience would as well. So Lynn, what, what are some of the things? Well, one of the hardest markets to keep up with trends on are the promotional, uh, <laughs> promotional products, because everyone always wants the latest, the coolest, the funnest things out there. Nobody wants to be the booth with uh, you know, something that, you know, a pen or whatever it may be. So now we've got pens that light up. We've got pens that can be <laughs> fans. We've got all different stuff. So um, they have trend reports that come out. But personally, um, I like to look through, and I spend a lot of time researching and looking, and I go on what I think is fun, what I think is cool uh, for promotional products because it's, it's hard to, you know, what haven't I seen before? And what don't you see out there? And what haven't I seen from a trade show? So there's a lot of cool things out there. And those are the kind of things that I try to present to my customers and keep them updated with. And, um, and, and that can be a lot of fun. For print, what I'm seeing for trends with print are, um, and, and this might go back to the, to the digital versus um, mail question too. Uh, what I'm seeing with print is the personalization at one point was very big. All of a sudden, everybody was personalizing calendars 10 years ago. Your names were in the cloud. Your name was whatever. And that kind of died off. And now, I mean, you, you don't see it as much anymore. 
And now, all of a sudden, uh, we're seeing that coming back. Mm -hmm. So we've had some uh, inquiries and done some recent campaigns where we put names on the back of shirts again, you know? And that seems to be, to the younger kids who haven't seen it, they're like, this is so cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, so all of a sudden, they're used to email, and granted, emails can be personalized, but they see it all the time, but when they actually get a piece of mail, or if they're at a conference and you hand out a piece of material that is customized to them, to the date of the conference, maybe something even a little bit more personal about their company throughout, uh, it, they take an impact, they take it home. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so I agree that, that print is on its way back and making it fun, the soft touch, the cutouts, the things that are available that used to take so long to do, but now, thanks to these guys, are so <laughs> easy. Mm -hmm. and, and it's easier to impress people. Effective personalization, my experience over the holiday is um, big. Um, I'm in the Amazon ecosystem. And unfortunately, there's quite a few boxes that show up on my doorstep. And there was um, a couple of boxes that came in printed with promotion of their latest movie, which is interesting because it was, you know, it was a sort of a movie that you know, I'm, I'm a big Prime user, and um, I found it to be very, very effective. And so those, those things are beginning to evolve, and the technology that you see out here enables you to do that. Cody, so how it keeps you, how you guys keep, stay current? Curious. So we, we do a lot of industry uh, research, and we leverage, we get a lot of information from partners as well um, it, it, to un understand what our customer base, or I guess, because technically we operate in the copies and quick print space, so we want to understand what we're seeing, what trends are, are relevant there. Um, so the, there, there seems to be that market based on the, the, what we see from an industry perspective, relatively flat, maybe slight increase or decreases year over year but over the next five years or so. But the areas in which uh, we don't necessarily operate in but we are, we are looking to operate in are, are other uh, larger um, print opportunities like promotional products. So we've dabbled in promotional products in the past, and unfortunately have not been as successful as we'd like to. But I think there were some, there were some challenges that, that we faced at that point in time that we were unable to overcome. And, so, um, and some of that was technology related. So now moving forward, and especially with Market Direct Storefront, I think we'll have at least a better infrastructure in place to be able to capitalize on some of these other markets that, that are underserved by our community. And, um, but to understand that, we do heavily rely on industry research that we do, that our partners do, um, as well as the traffic that we see coming into our locations and analyzing the needs of the customers that come in. So we are fortunate because we have so many locations and the access to a central database with all the information that comes through those locations, we can use, leverage that information mm -hmm. to say that we need to kind of shift um, our focus to over to these products or this types of products or um, we need to make sure that our franchisees um, are able to source specific types of equipment to meet uh, the needs uh, of the uh, the incoming generation, the incoming customer base, whatever that might be. So we leverage a lot of our own data, but we also leverage a lot of the industry data. Great. And Pam? We've done something a little different, a little unusual, and Cody touched on it about reaching out to other, um, I won't refer to them as competitors, but partners that are in the same business that we are for help. We can't, some of the times we want to be something to everybody, but we can't. It's just beyond our, our reach. So we have partnered with um, a company on the East Coast so that if we have crises in Chicago, Orlando, Philadelphia, in the trade show market, they're able to help us. And this partnership started about five years ago when we realized that there's too many emergencies to try to control. And we all want to be proactive. Nobody wants to be. And we all want to be proactive. So we took that partnership to a new level and we opened a facility. The two companies together opened a facility in Denver um, a year ago. They're in the same business that I'm in. Uh, they do other things besides us. We do other things besides them. But we've built a relationship. We have to, we've got to figure out how to reach out a little more. I mean, it's difficult to trust them, uh, trust anybody, you know. 
in this business because it's so competitive. Yes. But you get that feeling, you get that sense that, that you've got to do something. You just can't be everything to everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's worked out very well. And our Denver facility, um, the owner of Olympus, which is who we partnered with, owns 50% of Olympus, and I own, Color Gamut owns 50% of Olympus. I'm sorry, OCG, the name of the company in Denver. So we each own you know, 50% of it. Runs great. Great. Um, we've been very fortunate. It's doing extremely well. Extremely different than anybody would have ventured into. <laughs> and Mark? I, I would say it's a mindset for us. Uh, it used to be in the past, our mindset was how to run faster, how to have less waste. Um, how to get a unit cost done, maybe how to get a turnaround. And now there's um, a growing trend for how can I make my stuff look better than the other guy's stuff? Um, you know, the, the best example would be pay as you go cell phones. If you go to Walmart, you have Cricket, and Track Phone, and Straight Talk, and everybody's got four feet, and they spend $10 on a box with a phone they sell for $20. And the reason they do that is because if they can stop you, you're more likely to buy it. If you touch it, you're even more likely to buy it. So right. they run neon colors, soft touch coating, embossing, gatefold covers, Velcro snaps holding it together um, for a $10 phone. So the mindset is we always have to be looking for, I mean, in generically I would say they're embellishments, but you have to, if you keep your eyes open, they're out there somewhere. Um, but you just have to think like that. There's, there's, uh, you walk down the aisle and things catch your attention and I might not need that today, but next week somebody's gonna say, how do I, do? and I already know what it is. So I, I'd say it's a mindset, that's how you keep current. The, there's all kinds of answers everywhere. They're, they're in this room too and they're, and they're in another room. So um, you have to think like that. It, it's not necessarily all about cost because I, this, this is a $10 box. It should cost 80 cents, but it costs $10, but that's the market. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, changing gears a little bit, and I think um, from where we sit as a um, technology provider, a vendor, service provider, um, interesting. Uh, it, what do you guys feel sort of differentiates, and we are passionate about this because we constantly want to want, understand and learn um, because we serve serve many customers, and quite frankly, um, the clientele that we serve is we serve um, your businesses that are mission critical because of the turnaround times, um, small to mid-sized businesses in many many cases. That um, you know, if um, your operations is down, printers da printers down. I mean, it really does have an impact on your business. Um, but what what really differentiates? Um, working with a supplier, a vendor, a partner, from being good to being amazing. And because we at EFI want to strive to being amazing. And I really am curious to hear what you, know, what you look for. Um, and Lynn, let's start, start with you. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's kind of three main things that we look for. And it's people, number one. People buy from people, people matter. <laughs> and responsiveness. How responsiveness are your vendors to your needs, and um, the other one would be talent. You know, do, is the talent there? Are they open? Are they? Are they? You know, is it um, a partner that you want to have? We don't look for vendors anymore. We really look for partners. You got to have somebody that you trust, relatively, Pam. <laughs> right? So you got to have somebody that you trust and somebody uh, that that wants to make you better. And honestly, that's how I feel about EFI, and especially the product. When I make a phone call, they go the extra mile, you know, and you're constantly pushing your technology forward that makes me think of things I may not have thought of. And then again, that can offer up new offerings. You know, um, even though technically cross-media doesn't have a lot to do with print, and I keep kind of going back to that, and it's my marketing background, um, you do print better than anyone else out there in the digital space. So having a printer who understands leads, who understands print resolution, 
actually build a product that can then mix an email and put it all together and have triggers that leads to the next communication, have a powerful database in the back end. I mean, those are things that I didn't think could be done on one platform yeah. until, until I saw this. So that's really the three things, kind Great. of PRT, people, Great. responsiveness, and talent. Fantastic. Thank you. Cody. I know. <laughs> uh, Just but, say PRT. Yeah, PRT. PRT. Yeah. Well, it, honestly, uh, I do. I, I echo the same sentiment that Lynn has here. Uh, we're, we're specifically working with EFI, and, and I'll, just to kind of add my own flavor to that, I'll say that um, EFI takes a very, at least with us, and I'm, I'm sure that with everybody here, uh, it takes a very consultative approach as opposed to directive or dictative. Uh, it's very. We need to. We want to fully understand your business, what your what your goals are with the business. And we're going to work together to get to to come to a resolution or solution. And it may not be something that's out of the box for for EFI, but it's something that they can certainly. Um, they always rise to the challenge. They always come to, to, to the table with the solution. Um, but I and I don't feel that they do so in a way that's self-serving um, to either party. So it's not self-serving to me. It's not self-serving to uh, EFI. It, it is certainly a, a a collaborative approach to a product. Um, that's at least how I walk away feeling. Mm -hmm. And. Yeah, and I think that's that's a testament to this to this company. It, it, they truly have the, the their end customers, and their end customers' customers, and always top of mind when they're approaching these conversations, they're approaching these challenges, or developing solutions internally. And I think that that is old. That, that is why we are here today. The UPS store. I mean, that's why we're here today. Uh, that's heavily one of the biggest reasons. And I I look forward to continuing that that relationship because. You know, I, I feel that we're, that we're important. I feel that they, even more importantly, they understand the needs of our customer base, and they're working to help provide help us provide solutions for them, and it, it's just a win-win all over. But so uh, that's again my own way of saying PRT. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excellent, Pam. We look for reliability and service and partnership. We are a 24 hour, we are a really truly 24 hour, seven day a week shop. We have to be because we're in that market. Um, and that brings on its own challenges. So we've got to have equipment that's reliable. We've got to have equipment that has service. Service is the key. Um, it doesn't matter to us if it's two o'clock in the morning and our machine is not working properly, we've got to know that we can call someone and they're gonna answer. We've had our challenges over the years, but again, it's been 30 years for us with our relationship with you. Yes. And it's not all, it's like anything else. We've now, well, I would love to say we're perfect, but we're not. You know, I'd love to say that EFI is perfect, because they are. They've come a long way. <laughs> the better you get, the better we get. No question. I mean, when we we um, we got we got into this business um, 15 years ago, it it's um, it was just a business, a different world. I came from the um, the cut sheet world and same day eight hour response time and moving into the grand format space. It was you know five seven days because the campaigns you ran. Were, you know, weren't as the turnaround times weren't required. So it's okay, you could you can kind of afford it. And that just rapidly changed. Um, and so yeah, to, they want everything today. So that, that does become mission critical. And um, we no, we are not perfect, but we, we want to understand, you know, what's those, what are those important um, you know, components uh, to keep you up and running 24 seven so you can serve your customers. Well, you have made huge strides immensely over the past, you know, 15 years. You know, there were times, you know, we were divorced and then mm -hmm. we got married again. <laughs> um, <laughs> but <laughs> with good cause. It's better the second time around. <laughs> <laughs> Start checking. So with that said. Great. Mark? I'll echo, echo some of the things you just said. Our, our facility in Minneapolis is a true 24-7. We run four shifts. And that is one of the things I always tell our suppliers is usually if you get a phone call from me, something's wrong. And it probably won't be between 9 and 5 on Monday through Friday. It's on we're, Friday night. It's we're, 8 o'clock. 
Yeah, so nobody ever brings a problem well, we know after five, but literally it's like, I need a blower motor for this cutter, or I need a, <laughs> and it's Sunday at two o'clock, so go open your warehouse and find it for me. Um, so certainly that comes along with it, but I, I would like to add to that, that our, our vendors, you can, you can think of them like literally the box of chocolates. Uh, you can get instant gratification from some of them, but that flavor goes away pretty quick. And if they aren't there, they're no that's good. Right. And that's one of the things I would say that if you look at the products that EFI has here, um, I bought Butech presses before EFI owned them, uh, online print systems before EFI owned them. And one of the things we're always looking for in a vendor, it's, it is a long-term relationship. You, you can't be that chocolate. What's next? Um, you know, we're, we're working already on our Nozomi that's installed and running. What's the next things that we can do with it? So there, there has to be some forward thinking in the vendor that you might not have everything today, but there's got to be a vision for something else. What's the next fastest, the wider, it's longer, mm -hmm. it's got more colors, give me different embellishments. And that's more of what I would look for in a vendor. I just can't have one chocolate because then you're gone. And we have some of those. You know, the prices go up every year instead of down. The, the service gets worse every year. Instead. So we're looking for improvement in everything every year. So um, along with that comes a long-term relationship. That's wonderful. So. Running out of, we ran out of, we're running out of time, so I can ask a ton of other questions. I, I want to thank you all for spending the morning sharing your businesses and your thoughts. So, so important. Um, we never get enough of it. I, I just my, in my role, I go out and see thousands of customers um, every year. I, we learn a lot. Um, we make sure we communicate and we port that back into those folks so that we can build better product and serve you guys at every level, whether it's somebody um, you know, that sends you an invoice or you know, you're placing an ink order and giving you a great experience, which we're, we're, we, we want to constantly improve that so that feedback is just, it's, it's, it's overwhelming and we appreciate that. So please join me in, in, in thanking the panel here and spending the time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.